Hello, I'm Martin Keating, the head engineer and songwriting teacher at London Music School, and I want to talk to you about music. I really love you. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to write a love song um, or a love ballad, the same sort of thing, and give you go through some of the fundamental tricks that I use and a lot of songwriters use to piece things together and get the right mood for, as a songwriter. For, first of all, we deal with having a title and of course the hook, which everybody knows about, which is the, the big chorus. But the most important thing is the melody. Um, and in ballads, especially love ballads, it's very, very important that that melody has some sort of movement, romantic movement in it, which will happen in lots of ways by the chord sequence we use and the movement of the melody. So here's some fundamental things you'll, you'll find in most pop songs. They're nearly always in 4-4, apart from the odd 6-8-1, but nearly always in 4-4. The tempo ranges between 75 and 95 beats per minute, and all songs are based on structure. And we talk in the, in the business about A, B, A, B, A, B, or A, B, C. These are the different chunks, like verse would be A, chorus would be B. A C part would be a third part, like a, a middle eight or a bridge or what they call in America is a release. Now, just below here, we have something that's very, very important. If I'm working in the key of C or any key, we work on the different stages of the scale. So you've got major is number one, then minor, minor, major, major, minor, and diminished. That's the seven stages of the scale. These become really important when it comes to songwriting. If we go back to the 50s and the 60s, nearly all songs there were pop songs, and even the ballads were written around 145, which is C, F, and G in the key of C. But in the last 10 years or so, the really popular sequence is the 1645. So you look up here, so it's one major, six is the minor. That's where the difference is. And adding that minor chord allows us to have a little bit of mood into the music. Um, so that's how you, we, we'd structure this one of the songs I'm going to show you how I use both these sections, 145 and 1645. Nearly all ballads are written on three, three standards, which is either somebody you used to know before, so somebody you loved in the past, somebody you love now, or the one you've not met yet, which is in the future. And that's how we, we sort of base our lyric on. And some really important points, the title, I always believe, should be very simple. Um, it should be able to relate to other people, because when they're listening to it, if you make it too personal, the person listening will always, obviously not know who you're talking about. And so you've got to make them feel the same mood you would feel in the song, which we do by the title. And of course, then we write down little stages that we think are important about the person or the person we're singing about. And we break it into, we truncate it into sections like verses and chorus. So you might take somebody's whole life and get it down to two verses and a couple of choruses. So those are really important things. So this song I've written was, was, was written for somebody I knew. I kept the title very simple, just called I Really Love You. I'd written the, the hook, I really love you, and the melody came into my head at the same time, which they often do. But then you have to go to the piano and work out the structure around that little bit that you've got together and try and turn it into a song. So what I did is I kept the verse at 145, which is C, F and G, so I'll just show you that here. But I actually start in the, the, of the chord of F, so I start in the 4 to the 5 to the 1. So the verse is built on that. And at that point, I said, right, I need to have some movement because it would just be a bit boring to have. So I added a few extra notes, but still sticking around the F, F, G and C in the key of C. I'll go through the melody in a minute. So I got the, the verse based on that. And then a chorus came into my head for that. I really love you because I had the actual chorus. So that was one, six, four, five. Love you, really love you, there's no other undercover. Really love you. Now I had one fundamental problem here, because the verse ends in the key of in the chord of C, and the chorus starts in the, the chord of C. So there was no movement between verse and chorus. So this is where I had to go back and write, and this is what you often have to do with the songs, to write a bridge point that will take you from point A to point B. So up here, as I said, I used the second chord, which is the the, the two, which in this case would be D minor in the key of C. So to get away from the C so I could come back to it and give it a lift. So I've got my verse, like I said, F, G, 
C. So I used the D to, as a distraction, which we often do. If we have two parts that are very similar, so we don't notice the similarity, we move away for a bit and then come back again. So we went to the D minor. Then I go back to C, and it feels like I've got a lift from that point by just distracting the person for a minute into a different part of the different chord uh, structure. So those are the more fundamental things. Always write th songs that have, um, when you're writing, you should get a motive, and it should be about somebody you know. I think it should be based on, um, on some real feelings, and that will come out in the melody then. And if you keep the, this, the, the song structure simple, and the chord structure is simple, it allows people, apart from yourself, to be able to play it and also to be able to sing it. If you, if you have a massive range, so like some Whitney Houston songs, it's quite hard for other singers to sing them, and so you narrow it out the kind of people that are going to listen to it. So uh, something they can identify with and chords that they can play. So you can use these techniques literally um, for in any key and for any song, but with the ballads, it's um, very simple to keep it into the key of C for the moment. So this is, I'll just sing a little bit of it to give you an idea. So I had my uh, hook, as I said, I had my melody just for the chorus, and then I wrote a bit of melody over the verse, which would be the, the F, G and C chords. Though the innocence is gone, We were strangers for too long Have a lifetime on my own Have a love life on my own So that was the basic verse. And then we went to this middle eight part to distract for a second. When did this love start? How do we both know? How did this love start to really grow? Then after the chorus, I really love you. Really love you. There's no other undercover. Really love you. And so on. So that was the chorus, and that's the three parts put together. Um, and when we, I, I'll play it later on um, in, with more instruments. So that's how you get the basic songs. If you keep things very simple, and there's a couple of songwriters I listen to, like Lionel Richie, and who actually make it very clear that the titles should be simple. People should understand what you're singing about, and they should be able to relate to the person you're singing about as if it was somebody they knew as well. So those very important fundamental parts of songwriting and joining the three parts together as, as little blocks of verse, chorus, and middle eight is how I write songs by using these very simple techniques up here. So there we are, we have the, the song we were listening to in there, the song I was working on. And we're going to listen to the track as it is, um, using the one, four, five trick in the, the verse and the one, six, four, five trick in the chorus with the bridge section that goes with the two. And obviously it's written about somebody I know and it's in the concept of what we're talking about, writing a love song. Um, so have a quick listen. Senses come. We were strangers for too long. Have a lifetime in a crowd. Have a love life on my own. Now I'm looking to you, love. I see a love. So here's the bridge section, going to number the, uh, the, the two chord. Here's the uh, one six four five part.
Well, there you go. That's how to write a love song. <laughs>